gradients. They are a change from one color to another across a vector. They make cool looking backgrounds. They're really easy to make. So let's go make some. First, obviously, you're gonna make a new solid. I shouldn't say obvious because that's pejorative, but anyway, make the solid whatever color you want. In this case, we're gonna go with a nice royal purple, or no, black. We're gonna keep it a nice standard masculine black color. Goes with everything. Okay, so make a solid, and it doesn't matter what color you make the solid because you're going to go type into effects and presets ramp, pull out the ramp, drop it on there, or however you like to apply your effects. And now you'll see it has changed your black solid to be whatever the ramp is. So then you can pick your start color and your end color. Uh, you'll notice that the start of the ramp you can move around and we're gonna change it here first to a radial ramp. Now the start of the ramp is going to be the center. Put it, you know, obviously near the center. Um, and the end of the ramp, let's put that down here near this corner. Uh, doesn't have to be exact, just kind of get it close. We'd like the outside to be black, and we'd like the inside to be white. Um, now this is pretty harsh, so you can go ahead and you can change this to be a grayer shade, you know, however gray you'd like it. Keep it subtle, something like that. Or you could leave it as black, grab this endpoint, drag that out a little bit. But one of the things that you might notice is you get what happens here in the middle area when you have not a lot of distance between the two colors then you get what's called banding and to prevent that you just go here where it says eight bits per channel and then hold down alt and click it you go to 16 banding gets a little bit less noticeable click it again banding is gone this effect is a 32-bit effect, meaning it works best in 32 bits per channel mode. Uh, so that's one way to make the ramp, but it's not very controlled, right? I mean, we were able to, you know, pretty much do what we wanted, but at the end of the day, you can really only affect pulling two points, you can only have two colors, and you don't have a lot of control. So this is probably the quickest and dirtiest way to make it work, but here's a better way. All right, delete this stupid layer or just never make it. Go up here where there's a rectangle, double click on it. Now, as you can see, I've been making gradients already, but the idea is you're going to create a shape layer that uses vector math to create fills and strokes. So if you have a stroke on it, click the word stroke here and go to this square with a line through it. That means none, okay. And in the fill, you're gonna to go to either linear gradient or radial gradient. Click on that, okie doke. Now in this one you'll see these familiar points, these start and end points. So, you know, leave one in the middle, drag one out to the outside. Um, you can access those by twirling down in here. You get the start point and end point. They mean about the same thing. Except, if you want some fine control over this, click on this box up here and it'll pull open your gradient editor. And you can do some cool stuff in here, like you can change the midpoint. You know, let's try to set up what we had in the other example. We had a black part and we had a white part. So now you're able to change where the midpoint is between those two, which is pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, you can change opacity as well. You can toggle back and forth between radial and linear really fast. Um, you just have a lot more fine control. So. What if I decide, you know, I want to go from white to black to white again, or I want to throw in some other wacky colors, or I want to do, you know, a whole bunch of neat stuff, I want a rainbow, whatever you want as a gradient, you know, you can make with this, and it is a great tool for getting it done. Um, it can provide you a lot of artistic options, because you can just keep adding these in. So what I do usually is I create a subtle gradient um, between... Uh, I'd say it's between a uh, 50% gray uh, outer side. Um, put this to 75 between the two. Sometimes I even push this a little bit, uh, a little bit closer. I mean, 75, 75 blackness and the midpoint at 75% between the two. Hit OK and call it a day. But you can put in whatever you'd like. So don't feel pigeonholed into doing whatever I do. Uh, if you don't think this looks good, use these tools to make something you think looks better. Um, 
Now the other thing is that I put in some text, obviously. So, you know, we can make some text. If you want the text to have a gradient, you know, you can do a lot of, you can put that on in a lot of ways. You could apply a ramp to it, uh, or you can duplicate this original layer. Um, just let me just toggle the switches and modes here and set its track mat to be the alpha mat of the letters above it, meaning that it will reference the thing above it to say which parts are see-through and which parts are not. And then we can't really see it because it blends in so well with the background, so grab these two things and uh, we're gonna pre-compose them. Okay, whatever, uh, add a drop shadow to that. You know, so then we can kind of see what we're looking at here. Doop 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 doo 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 maybe something like this. Uh, there we go. So now we have this word gradient subtly popping out here. Um, drop shadow is on that. Now you'll notice I did a lot of color variations. Some of them are done by changing that gradient layer, but some of them are done by going new adjustment layer and putting in a curves adjustment to everything. Now you can also play around with the with the levels here. You can make it lighter, darker, you know, increase the contrast. Oh, oh, we're getting some banding. So remember, keep out the banding by upping your bits per channel, okay? But work in 8-bit and save yourself some hassle, all right? So, you know, you can make this a little bit darker, you know. And one of the things I do is I tweak generally the colors up and down in some capacity so that I'm tinting the shadows to be the opposite color as the highlights in some cases. So, you know, it just creates a little bit of visual interest uh, doing it that way, but feel free to, you know, experiment and see what works for you and try to have a good time and just don't let the man keep you down. In this case, I guess I'm the man, which is flattering, but at the same time, you know, why do what I do? Make your own Make your own kind of music, sing your own special song, you know? But this is a great way to make backgrounds for motion graphics elements, or if you're doing an animation and they don't really care what the background is, throw this in. It's classy, it's simple. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna break the bank for time, and really, at the end of the day, keeping it simple is what's gonna make it look a lot more appealing. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. There's some more tutorials about how to make things look cool. Uh, check those out. I talk about textures. I talk about layer styles. I put them out at the same time. Uh, if you like that kind of thing, check those out. I'll put some links on here. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to learn some more cool stuff. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you have questions or put questions in, in the comments section here. And uh, I hope you have a grand old time making things look good using gradients. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.